Hello and welcome back to part 2 of the DIPS tutorial. Uh, we continue uh, to explore DIPS and let's now look at the density slicing module. So in this module we have an image and uh, you can click on this radio button to see how this image actually looks like. Um, you can have the data view back again and uh, move between the image and the data view. Notice in between this image uh, there is a river that is flowing uh, in this landscape. So um, what we are trying to do is to show how we can actually mask everything out from this image and if you were just interested to see how pixels were varying inside the river we could actually density slice this image and introduce color in a pseudo um, color image. So let's start um, we can just press add slice values and this is slice 1 uh, it says you have to define a low and a high value so after examining this river area um, we find that the lowest pixel value is um, 3 and the highest pixel value is 19 so um, we are just going to create the first slides and we will just say from let's say from 0 to 5 and it will be displayed in this color we'll add another slice value we'll say it is from 6 to let us say 10 and this will be in this color and we can add another slice value likewise um, say 11 to 15 which will be in this color and finally um, from maybe 16 to 19 which will be in this color and once we are done we can just press done and we can just density slice the image so what has happened here is that all the values that are not in this range have been masked out and only the river portion is actually uh, showing up in different colors based on these ranges so this is how we can threshold or slice an image and introduce pseudo color in a grayscale image next up is uh, classifier and this tool is used to illustrate um, a supervised classification we have an image and we want to classify it into four classes and what we are going to do is to show the students how a signature is collected and how an image is classified so we just simply press this create new signature and let's say the first four pixels are of water so we can just click on these and we can show to the students that uh, as we click on the image or draw a polygon on the image what's really happening is that values um, uh, are actually uh, getting marked and we can just simply save this signature we'll call it water and just say OK so what happens in the background is that um, uh, some basic statistics is collected which is now being shown and a signature has actually been added next we create another signature and we will say um, let us say this is an urban area we will save this signature and call it urban and again uh, statistics for the urban class has been calculated in the background which is now being shown and a signature has been added next uh, we can create another signature and let's say this is vegetation we'll save signature and call it vegetation um, statistics for this signature is shown once again and the signature is added right here we can click here and choose an appropriate color um, let us do that right now and finally let us um, create one more signature which is um, let's say scrub and I delineate the areas that I know for sure are scrub values in the background are picked up and we can save that signature and call it scrub 
So once we are done with collecting our signatures for the classes in which we want to classify the image, we can just press this stop collecting button and then we have an option of uh, two classifiers just for demonstration. Uh, one is the minimum distance to mean classifier, one is the parallel pipette classifier. Let's just pick up the minimum distance to mean classifier and classify this image. So the moment we press this, we have a classified image which is actually showing you in comparison to the original image how each pixel has actually been classified. Now um, what you can do is to um, click on calculator and what uh, DIPS will do is to show you calculation of uh, the first five or six or seven pixels that you have chosen here. You have to specify this here. So I've just said six pixels and when you can click here and you have to press the classify button one more time but this time around DIPS is actually showing that um, I'm picking up this value, I'm examining this value and I'm trying to find out the, dis the distance between this value and the mean of class 1, this value and the mean of class 2, this value and the mean of class 3 and this value and the mean of class 4 and I'm going to assign this pixel to that class from which this pixel has the shortest distance. So it comes back and tells you that it has the shortest distance to the water class and therefore this pixel has been classified as water. And we'll move on to the next pixel. Calculations are shown once again and the student has um, now an opportunity to see how uh, classification is actually proceeding pixel by pixel based on uh, the distance that the pixel has from each of these classes. So um, using this tool uh, we can actually illustrate how classification actually proceeds. And because we chose six pixels, beyond six pixels just classified everything. Um, what you can do is to copy this image and keep it in reserve and this time around uh, do the same classification using parallel pipe classifier. It is asking you um, about uh, standard deviation. So let me just put two standard deviations and this is how the image would be actually classified using the parallel pipette classifier. Uh, the important point to illustrate here is that the parallel pipette classifier, unlike the minimum distance to mean classifier, can actually end up in unclassified pixels. So um, after you have taught uh, supervised classification and illustrated some algorithms in the class, you can actually use this tool, the classification tool of DIPS to illustrate um, uh, the idea of classification in an interactive fashion. Students can then, you know, download this software and later on study in their free time and revise the concepts. Um, next and the last module is accuracy assessment. So this is also an interesting topic uh, which many students uh, find difficult to grasp. So here we have a classified image and here we have uh, for each pixel uh, what is uh, you know called as ground truth information so this is what is actually the identity of pixel on the ground and this is what it has been classified with so um, we will set a sampling intensity let us say 20 percent or 30 percent and um, then identify the pixels so randomly uh, dips I will identify 13 random pixels which are now identified both on the classified image as well as um, on the ground reference and then we can just proceed to uh, create the error matrix so we can just uh, click here and so an error matrix has actually been created um, comparing each pixel to its identity onto the, uh, 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 the, the ground reference. Now um, what you can do is to um, use the calculator and this time around um, the matrix actually is dynamically created showing you pixel by pixel how the counting is actually being done and how it is being scored in the matrix so you can just keep proceeding 
and this matrix gets filled up in front of you and the student can actually see how um, uh, the uh, the pixel in the classified image is being compared to and counted against the pixel on the ground reference and how the error matrix is actually getting filled. Uh, you can also click this button to sh show errors of omission and commission uh, which can uh, which the student can actually follow uh, all calculations are given here. You can also um, click this button to show how the k hat or kappa statistic can actually be calculated. So this is a matrix of products and the moment you press OK you can actually just keep moving and it will just keep showing you how each cell is actually getting filled by uh, multiplying the row and the column total and uh, the student can see step by step how this matrix is actually being filled and then finally once it is filled uh, DIPS calculates the, um, uh, the, the, the kappa statistic and uh, this kappa statistic then can be interpreted uh, uh, as told in the class. So again uh, you know you can actually look at some exercises uh, that the students can actually follow uh, to um, understand this concept. So this was a brief overview of uh, uh, the digital image processing simulator. As mentioned earlier this is a free software which can be downloaded and uh, can be used in the class. Um, uh, the help topics in individual modules can also be accessed from this button right here and you can have a direct access to any particular help topics. So uh, I hope that you find DIPS useful and that you can use it in your classroom. Thanks for watching.